So here's a quick vid about um, using a PIC 16F1705 and uh, we're using the uh, crystal oscillator here which is connected to a 32 kilohertz uh, watch crystal and we're using that uh, as a sort of very low power timer uh, for it and uh, in order to do that we're uh, also we've got something when it goes to sleep um, although the timer is still running the CPU falls asleep and to wake it up there's two things that can happen either the timer times out which will be every two seconds the way we've configured it and the other alternative is is that there's um, an interrupt on change here which is uh, on the falling edge so if we push a button um, it will change uh, it will uh, cause another in uh, cause another uh, could come out of sleep again. We're not using interrupts, we're just actually taking it out of sleep rather than using uh, interrupts. And uh, I've got a couple of pins here which are dedicated outputs. One to uh, it toggles every time it sees a, a falling edge on here, and we've got here which is every two seconds. And uh, this is the board itself, a bit of a mess, but. Um, you can see the button here, which I've uh, used, which is your internet, so your interrupt on change, which is so we're not using an interrupt, we're using it to come out of sleep. Um, got a couple of things here, which uh, I've hooked up to a scope so we can see it going in and out. Problem is, if you start putting LEDs on these pins, they're really high current, so um, yeah, we uh, I tend to avoid uh, doing that in these low power situations. And um, this is the current draw, and you see it flips between two different values. There's um, the lower one about 970 or so nanoamps, and there's about 1.3 microamps. You might think, oh, why is that? And the reason is, is that if we have a look on the, the scope here, the top trace is our um, timer one, uh, which uh, changes state every um, uh, every two seconds, as I mentioned. Uh, you'll also notice that I have here. I actually twiddle it um, a couple of times and the reason for that is is I can uh, see from that what uh, frequency the uh, clock is running at um, on the, or get some indication uh, when it comes out of sleep. So you can see that uh, changing state uh, every two seconds uh, which is as expected and um, when it's high you know, that's when we actually get the the higher current on here and the reason is is that although the scope probes are um, they are um, high um, high impedance scope inputs uh, there's one meg input but there's a 10 to 1 probe so 10 meg input this is the extra 300 nanoamps that you're seeing on here so because we're running at 3.3 volts so it's about 330 nanoamps if I pull that out then you'll see that it will pretty much stay around about 970. There'll be odd little times when it comes out of sleep that you'll see that it does actually have a little jitter there. But um, if I stick it back on, there we go. Um, by the way, just something about this current range of thing. This is a relatively new device that, I, that I've picked up, which um, is kind of handy, but um, at low currents, unfortunately, as you see, it does, does wander around a little bit. Um, the supply voltage, the power supply I'm using for this, by the way, um, it's coming from an SMU uh, source measure unit, and uh, you'll see that pretty much reflects as well exactly what we were seeing. Although you'll see that it's, it's a bit more stable. If I pull out that um, scope pin, you see that it's it's a bit more of a stable reading there, and you can see when it comes out of uh, sleep there. Little, there's a little peak and that happens okay so the other thing that I should show you is the um, interrupt on change so I've got a little button here and uh, that's hooked up to the green trace now the problem is is that uh, I'm gonna have to change the uh, trigger on here so the trigger uh, comes out of uh, channel 2 instead and uh, go back and if I now can see here this is me changing the uh, state of it so as you can see uh, that's, uh, that's how we use the internet on change come out of sleep and uh, oh, one other thing I should mention is that I'm using a weak pull-up the internal weak pull-ups for this and the uh, current draw is huge when you pull the uh, pin low so you'll see the, the pins there, it's going to there, there's an internal weak, weak pull-up. 
But um, you'll see if I, when I push the button, you'll see it goes up to 88 microamps when the button's pushed, which is huge in the big scheme of things. So um, you'll notice it goes up to, now goes up to 1.6 and then down to 1.3. The reason for that is, is that I've uh, left the green trace high. So if I get the green trace low, okay, we'll go back to the 1.3 microamps and down to the 970 odd microamps. Okay, hope that was it. hopefully that was useful. Cheers now.